Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stamina. I'm your host for TBH Media for the first episode of 905 and 808. Let's get it. Today, we're going to have a special guest. His name is Lothr. He's from Montreal, my home city. And he's one of the few French artists we're going to have on this podcast. So we're going to talk with him. What's his inspiration, his vision, and a little bit about mental health as an artist nowadays, since it's a very important topic to discuss. Okay. So, um, est-ce que tu vas lancer, um, vas-tu lancer un album quand en fin d'été ou quelque part? Ben, je, un, un album, I don't think so, but uh, je suis en train de regarder. Like, you know, like dropping maybe an, an EP, something like that. Mm -hmm. I think it would, would fit more my, like my understanding of the game and also my, uh, my vision. Because I'm, I don't feel like I, that I'm ready to drop an album yet. I don't think I have enough content for an album. No, an EP so. would be, yeah, an EP would be good. I think like four songs, three, four songs, so I can introduce people to my universe. And like, you know, put some kind of a mystery. So they wait for uh, mm -hmm. what's going to happen next. But uh, yeah, eventually if I'm able to drop an album like you did, like uh, 10, 12 songs, like uh, that's, that would be nice, man. That would be great. Maybe mm -hmm. next year we'll see. Yeah. All right. No, it's a good idea, bro. Because you have to build your like, fan base before you launch a big project like that. Because it takes time, it takes money, and... Yo, Comment oui. temps ça t'a pris toi à faire ton album Moi ça l'a pris... Euh... Yo, honnêtement ça l'a pris un bon genre 7-8 mois au moins. Au moins 7-8 mois. Puis c'est pas parce que l'enregistrement ça l'a pris du temps. C'est à cause des mix des engineers. Parce que des fois les engineers sont pas nécessairement ton, ta priorité numéro un. Mm. Fait que ça l'a pris un peu de temps avec eux. Des fois, le mix n'était pas genre, comme je le voulais, alors tu sais, on, on fait genre des back and forth. Mais c'est bon, il like, faut, faut faire ça. Parce il faut que tu rends que ce soit la qualité que toi tu veux. Ouais, non, mais... sérieux là, si tu veux pas, yeah. ouais. Non, yeah. you need to do that, for sure. Yeah, mais toi, t es, t es, tous les, 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 les beats qu'il y avait dans, ton, dans New Beginning, c'est euh, des, des, des instrumentals de producers que tu connais. Comme ben, en fait, fait avec... ouais, ben écoute, en fait. Euh... La majorité de ces beats, um, c'était genre plusieurs producteurs, genre un peu partout, genre sur la planète, en fait. Parce okay. que j'avais pas comme un go-to producer avant, mais mm -hmm. tu sais, j'aimais beaucoup leurs beats. Fait que j'ai acheté leurs beats, puis... Um, yeah, yeah. Nice. Et j'ai pris exclusif comme ça. Um, genre, c'est vraiment officiel dans l'album. Mais admettons, si okay. je voulais faire un... Ch chaque beat, tu as pris l'exclusif. Euh... Ouais. Nice. Yeah, ouais, ça, est tout est exclusif. Ouais, ça c'est vraiment man. genre hardcore, mais... <rire> nice, bro. Respect for real, man. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mais c'est ça, le prochain, le prochain projet que je fais, là, um, j'ai trouvé un producer à Toronto qui est vraiment bon, man. Puis genre, tu sais, okay. on, on, je suis allé le voir genre en personne plusieurs fois. Fait que euh, la production va être plus genre de moi-même, genre plus genre mes yeah. idées, tout ça. Yeah. Puis aussi... Um, Genre, ils vont avoir le son que je veux, ils vont voir comme les patterns que je veux. C'est pas Exactement. juste quelque chose que j'aime, puis je suis comme, ok, je vais mettre genre des lyrics, puis c'est ma voix. Non, de... yeah. Mais c'est ça que moi j'essaie de faire aussi, parce qu'avec justement ce projet It's Story, j'ai découvert qu'il y a plein de producers qui sont vraiment bons à, à Montréal, mm -hmm. partout dans le Canada. Puis, genre, surtout à Montréal, j'essaie de rencontrer des producers, puis j'ai même un de mes très bons amis, c'est lui qui m'a fait aussi commencer à, à rap. Mm -hmm. C'est mon cousin Stéphane. Euh, c'est lui, je ne sais pas si tu as déjà vu, j'avais mis à des beats. Euh, c'est un beatmaker qui s'appelle Rudak. Rudak, uh, non, je pas entendu parler. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I drop a few of his uh, beats. Uh, but you know, this guy, uh, like, like he's, um, he's an upcoming beatmaker, man. He, has, um, he, wants to be, he wants to be one of the best guys out there. So he's, he's working hard, he's learning. Yeah, and he's my family, so the project, long-term project, is for us to work together and mm -hmm. do our stuff. You know? Yeah, man. Um, yeah. 
J'aimerais ça, honnêtement, que tu m'éduques plus sur euh, la scène de Montréal parce que je suis tellement genre, ancré à Toronto puis genre sur d'autres mm. euh, places. Je n'ai pas yeah, vraiment genre, les connaissances puis je ne connais pas vraiment qu ce qui se passe, honnêtement. Yeah, sure. Je connais genre Loud puis genre d'autres mm. artistes qui sont quand même big, mais je ne connais aucun genre producer, genre beat maker, genre, yeah. des ingénieurs, yeah. genre chose de même. Bro, Montréal, c'est comme... Euh... C'est comme si c'était jungle, bro. Il y a tellement de choses qui se passent, bro. Il y a, ouais. <rire> il y a plein de producers. Et in both, like, English and French. C'est vrai que j'ai remarqué qu'il y a une grosse variété. Euh, as, euh, mais là, les, ceux qui sont, commencent à être les plus connus, là, qui sont moins underground maintenant, c'est ceux qui font euh, like, du street rap. C'est un peu la, le gangster rap de Montréal, un peu. Mm -hmm. euh, et euh, ça, c'est des gars qui viennent euh, souvent genre de l'Est de Montréal. Euh, euh, d'autres spots aussi comme Côte des Neiges tu sais ils ont ils ont même mm -hmm. fait genre un peu les, les comme il y a comme les Montréal est séparé en zone aussi maintenant comme géographiquement mais dans le rap aussi so, tu mm -hmm. vois les gars qui viennent de je sais pas moi genre Antique les gens qui viennent de Côte des Neiges like, tu peux reconnaître un peu ils ont ils commencent à se regrouper and uh, for what I've heard bro, de plus en plus les gens commencent à coopérer parce qu'avant c'était comme très compétitif Mm -hmm. So, nobody was really making it, you know. So, c'était plus underground. Mais là, bro, surtout depuis comme l'année passée, on dirait, de plus en plus, il y a des gens qui link up avec la France, avec des choses comme ça. Nice, euh, nice. Bro, ça devient, il y a beaucoup d'opportunités maintenant. Euh, il y a, je pense, si t'as entendu parler de Tizo. Tizo, je pense, j'ai déjà entendu un peu parler. Ouais, ça me dit quelque yeah. chose. Yeah, ben Tizo, bro, ce gars-là, man, l'année passée, il a sorti un beat en fouette. C'est devenu un gros euh, méga hit. Et il, a, il a gagné, genre, euh, la chanson de l'année de la Socan. Ça, c'est la... C'est comme la société. C'est l'organisme qui s'occupe de tout ce qui est les droits d'auteur. Les droits mm -hmm. euh, c'est un peu comme... J'ai oublié c'est quoi les initiales de la Socan. Mais, euh, yeah, c'était vraiment... C'est un prix que d'habitude, les gens qui gagnent font de la variété, you know, de la chanson... Euh, la chanson québécoise. Mais le gars a fait un, un trap beat, rap, avec un peu de... Tu sais, français, avec du slang de Montréal, haïtien aussi. And the mm. guy won, like, the press. So, on, de plus en plus, bro, ça, Montréal devient de plus en plus, like, uh, like a land of opportunity for rappers. Because, uh, uh, whatever, like, peu importe ce que tu veux faire, tu vas trouver des gens avec qui tu peux devenir un peu affilié. Like, tu peux trouver mm -hmm. des... Peut-être ça va être des gens du West Island aussi. Il y a beaucoup de rappers du West Island. South Shore, like, ça... je pense que South Shore, ça a toujours été le, le main... Je pas, comme la méca du rap, genre au Québec, on... à Montréal en tout cas. Là. Rive Sud, Longueuil. So, tu vas toujours trouver des gens qui, qui rappent un peu dans ton style. Mm -hmm. Puis, um... But the next step is um, getting platforms, bro. Yeah, That's man. Yeah, yeah. So it's always getting... good to have like artists, uh, producers, rappers, but you need the platforms for them to shine, like, like locally. Pas juste comme pas yeah. obligé qu'ils aillent genre dans des, dans des, I don't know, like des plateformes de France ou des States. Il faut qu'il y ait des affaires ici aussi. Ou de Toronto mm -hmm. aussi. Il y en a beaucoup qui vont à Toronto. Il faut qu'il y ait des plateformes ici aussi. Yeah, and. You know what's crazy too is that um, it's really hard to blow up in your city locally at first because yeah, yeah. there's just so much content. And in Canada, we always have like really good quality producers, like quality like uh, music in general. But yeah. if you go outside, so like in Europe, if you send your stuff in Europe, so I tried Living Legend, like just sending it to friends and a lot of like, French people from Paris, they were like, yo, this is sick, man. Yeah, for so, real. I think, like, I... coming from North America, like, if you send your stuff, like, away to, like, those European countries, you know, all these countries in Europe, they will really, like, they will really appreciate it. They will be like, whoa, it's something new, like, they will be yeah. like, nice. Well, I, think, I think it has to do with the, the population, like, the demographic of uh, our countries. Because mm -hmm. you know, like Quebec, Canada, like there's not much people compared to like France or the States. So obviously, the, their markets are more evolved and they're more open to new inputs, you know? Because uh, mm -hmm. like, as opposed to here, like it's, let's say in Montreal, like with 3 million people, in Quebec with 8 million, uh, like you can't, you can't really open yourself to 
all kinds of artists. You have to make sure your small market is served by people that that match. Like, uh, like let, let's be honest. Like people here are old. Like most people here are very old. The population <laughs> yeah. is not like usually when you look at the population that uh, like the, the people that really listens to rap music. They're usually younger than 40, 40 and below. And in Quebec, we're missing this kind of population. So obviously, the, the existing platforms, they don't have much people to serve. So they're going to make sure uh, they, give, you know, they give visibility to people that, like, that corresponds to what they have in the society. So uh, that's, that, I think that's the reason why when we go to France or the States, they look more open to to our music, to our flows, to our, you know, to our, like, everything we're doing, because obviously, they don't care, bro. If, uh, if, if one million people in France likes your music, out of the 60 million population, like, that's not a lot, bro. It's like, but it's still something for us. Mm. It's a lot. Yeah, it's you know? huge. But for them, it's not that much. But here, one million, bro, phew, bro. <laughs> one million people here, that would be very crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's yeah. like the our main goal like as artists to like touch people's heart like mm. we do talk about our personal stories and we do share like our values and like our culture right but sure, sure. in order it's it's it has such a nice feeling for when people like realizes that it touches them into like an emotional state and you can really connect with them and vibe like that's mm. that's the be the best goal man Yeah, that's what I like because at first for me it was more about like uh, using my writing skills. I wanted to share like my ideas and my my imagination to people, but I wasn't expecting like this feeling, you know, the, the same feeling you're talking about like when you see people like vibing to your shit mm -hmm. and appreciating like you sharing a part of yourself, you know. And uh, honestly, I became addicted to this feeling because uh, it's awesome. Like you, you, you go from creating in your in your bedroom to sharing to the world and then having some people just coming to you saying yo i really like what you're doing uh it talks to me and and i mean that's why at this point it's like uh, it's magic bro so i i push i try to work harder to produce more content obviously we live in an era with like uh i think one friend when my friend said uh, people are like um You know, it's like the poisson rouge. You know, like they don't have much memory <laughs> these days. So you have to put the most content you you can out there because they're 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 gonna forget in two weeks the project. Yeah. You, you, mm -hmm. you know. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the summer to what's uh, the next month. But obviously, my my main goal is writing, writing, writing. Um, right now again, I'm meeting some producers, so I'm looking as well to stop buying beats and collaborating more with the people locally mm -hmm. and from there bro just uh, you know like uh, drop singles after singles eventually an ep and uh, eventually an album too yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um i know i know you want to collab more with the local scene which is good honestly because mm -hmm. you get mm -hmm. some really good like contacts like network You always mm. have your go-to guy, like, oh, I need something, mm. like, you just go see him. That's, that's the it's best a network. It's a network, yeah. Mm -hmm. You build a network and uh, there's nothing more valuable than a network as, uh, like, you never know what you, like, what any people from the network is going to need to do or to have from each other. So if you're in the network, you, you're set, bro. Uh, it's, it's more valuable than money, than, than yep. talent. It's all, it's all about who you know. Yeah, nowadays it's more important than ever to have like people that you trust, that you care, and then that support you to build that like in the music industry and outside too. Like your True. family and your friends. Like sometimes they might not like your stuff as much. Mm -hmm. But um you'll you'll have, you know, your few friends here and there, they're always like, Yeah, man, like I thought what you yeah. do, man, keep going, keep going. True, true. And that's so big, man, because sometimes mm -hmm. like you're like why did that song like do well right like what happened yeah and you need yeah. like that support yeah and you know, tell me i have a question for you because i'm i see i saw you you're dropping a lot of songs in french yes you're missing both like english and french is it um is it something that uh you 
I don't, how can I say? Like, is it something that comes out of, like, from you or from the environment? Like, do you see in your environment in Toronto, uh, in the music scene, mm -hmm. uh, people like you, like, doing, like, fr mixing French in English, people, like, vibing to it, even though they don't speak French? Okay, uh, yeah, that's a good question, man, actually. Um, yeah. The thing is... Where, where, does, where does it come from? Like, <laughs> Honestly, the bilingual like aspect of my music, it's just to represent like the city of Montreal. Actually, it's yeah, yeah. to kind of like bring back the roots where there's people where in the city mm. that speaks English solely. Some mm. speak straight French, and some are cr like pretty much bilingual. Mm. And then I wanted to push that in Toronto to kind of like bring that awareness. And it's like it's very like Canadian-ish, right? Like as a brand. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, I've noticed that there's a lot of people um, in Toronto that appreciate both language. And they would say, like, yo, like, if anything, just do stuff all in French. But I'm like, I do want to still talk to you guys, you know? Like, I still want to, like, communicate with y'all. Yeah, so, true. So. At some point, like, there's a balance to find between, like you said, talking to people, like, in the, in the language that they can understand mm -hmm. and having them, like vibe you know something like that's more about like the the rhythm that would just make them dance or whatever like have a good time yeah there's yeah a, pretty there's, much there's a balance because of bien danser avec moi when i listen to it i feel like it's a like it's a french song bro it's like uh it's something that uh, people like loud they do um mm -hmm. and it's good quality so i think it's um again bro it's it's an ex I know you're experimenting because uh, I never heard this kind of song from you before. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Brand but new like genre. Yeah, but it's good, bro. It's good to ex make experimentations because you never know the um, like the response you're going to get from it, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, are you trying to do um, a little bit of different styles from what you have already? Because I know, like, yeah. your stuff talks about more about the ladies and, like, it's, it is a yeah. very nice, yeah, yeah. like, chill vibe to it. I like it. Yeah, but actually, like, in terms of the, the theme, it's not going to change pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, I have my persona, so uh, it's, like, the other in French, l'autre. Yeah. And, and pretty much this guy is everything that, uh, uh, like, not just me, but every guy he's trying to withhold, you know? Like, the... Those, uh, I don't know, like the, those feelings, those dark thoughts people have usually, even, even girls as well sometimes. Uh, and this guy obviously is going to always be uh, in the dark, um, you know, like, um, so I'm trying, the, the way I'm writing is not going to change, but for sure I'm exploring like all kinds of uh, uh, genres. So, so far, I, the first song I dropped, Margiela, was more like a funky vibe. Mm. Um, yeah. hip-hop style but uh, I, I came with uh, other like more trap songs like Tarantino which is more like uh, no hook just bars and bars so I'm not I'm trying to like to be like more like I don't know how to say but peut-être plus melancholic I would say okay okay yeah and um, and from there bro uh, I'm dropping another song today actually but uh, just a lyric video on uh, IGTV okay nice nice so I'm, uh, as soon as we're done I'm gonna drop it on Instagram actually uh, so you're gonna see this is I think I'm trying to find my flow and this one uh, I got the influence from a guy in France called Lelo and okay. um, it's a French rapper who's basically is doing uh, what he calls a uh, Um, a digital trap so mm. it's a um, you can compare it to Nav like he puts a lot of uh, a kind of effect on his voice that makes you like feel like you're talking to your own self like there's oh, a kind okay. of an echo that's controlled and uh, it sounds really digital but human at the same time mm. so it's a kind of a, it's a kind of vibe I, I tried to, to explore in the studio so I'm, I'm dropping a, a, a song in two parts So I, I made a poll like last Friday to see if people were more into like long songs, like six, seven minute songs or into short, so shorter songs, you know, like um, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with sometimes like artists, they will drop a song that has two parts, but like it's two different songs. Mm -hmm. like, like Drake did recently with uh, 
uh, I remember, don't remember the name, the, the Chicago thing, I'm not sure. Dropped, yeah, uh, yeah. Exactly. I, it, there's a lot of artists who does that. It, it exactly. is cool. Yeah, it's cool. But uh, it's not for everyone, so I wanted to know, like for me, I, I like it, but I wanted to know if my, my fan base likes it too. So uh, I asked the question, and honestly, like I think it was 97% of people said they wanted two songs. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what's up, so, man. Yeah, so, so I'm dropping part one today. Mm -hmm. uh, part two will come uh, later this week. Uh, I'll see what's the response from the part one. And uh, eventually, I'll drop it on SoundCloud. I think SoundCloud is... Uh, I don't know what you're feeling about SoundCloud, though. I never really used it. I don't know if you... Yeah, okay. Well, you know what? Like, I haven't yeah. posted my music there, but it's a good idea to definitely okay. post as much as you can because you'll, you'll just get different fan base, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I know in terms of uh, monetizing your, 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 your art, it's not the best, the best platform to use. Right. But in you... terms of reaching people, like, that's... Uh, like, a lot of people are using SoundCloud to discover new artists. Mm-hmm. And to make like, uh, you know, like to make link between like this new guy and this top artist, like, okay, this is the new whatever. So uh, the tags they put and so on. So um, I'm thinking it should be a good idea to just drop those two parts in SoundCloud. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, yeah. And I, I didn't even buy the, the, the rights uh, for uh, the beats. I just found the beats on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, I'm going to drop them on SoundCloud since I can't make money out of it or whatever. Uh, I think it's, uh, I'm, I, like I'm giving shout outs to the producers, um, but I think it would be enough. It's going to be different from what I did before. Like I always, like you did, like I always did it like the proper way, like buying the rights and all, and, and all stuff. But uh, yeah. I, I knew I was doing it because I was uh, making sure my, my music uh, could also turn into maybe a business, you know? Like, uh, yeah. you, you never know if, uh, like, the album you did or whatever, like, uh, bumps a lot. And, I mean, if you, I don't know if you did any shows yet. I didn't, but um, it, I know it can be um, a, a problem if you do a show and you don't have the rights of the song you're using. Uh, like, there's a lot of ramifications to, like, doing the business side of music the proper way. So this time for the, uh, it's going to be called uh, Ad, vitam in, uh, Ad Vitam Eternam. It's Latin for uh, living everlasting. Mm. So life forever. Because um, the song I'm dropping in June with its story, it's called Requiem. Uh, and it's Latin for um, like, um, um, like the, mass, the mass of the dead. So pretty much it's a, it's a thing for, for remembering um, Uh, like the dead, uh, it's pretty. It's pretty dark because the the main point for me is to say goodbye to myself and to embrace the other. You know, to become mm. lot. And and for that, I have to live forever first, and then and then die uh, to become uh, to to open a new chapter of my my persona. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Man, that's, that's good. Dumb. Yeah. So. Uh, It's, uh, I think, like, I think you understand when I tell you the, like this, but I'm, exp I'm hoping people will understand with the music I'm, I'm going to drop because mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's going to be very different from what I did, but in the same, again, in the same line in terms of themes and the writing style. So I'm not changing the way I write. The, you know, it's still going to talk about the relationship with women, uh, about like uh, alcohol, drugs, partying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like uh, dreams, like the, like you know, this conflict between uh, living the dream, uh, whether it is while sleeping or while having fun with your friends, and being in reality, like when, like you have to live with the consequences, like the the mental consequences are also, especially of um, of having those thoughts, you know. So I'm gonna, and it's always fun too. For me, it's fun. I'm trying to make, to put a, a lot of humor in it. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of second degree. Um, and, uh, but so far, I think people, uh, they understand it's, uh, it's about having, like, I know, like for you, like I know it's, um, you, your music style is, is different, but still the same. Because uh, I mean, you try to give more of a message to people. Mm -hmm. but, but I remember like listening to songs like GPA, bro, it's, it's, 
funny, bro. It's like yeah. <laughs> humor, and it and it and it talks to people too. So there's a. I'm not into making a division between conscious rap and you know like mumble rap or mm -hmm. or unconscious rap, if I may say. I'm more into like, well, if it talks to some people, it, it talks to people. If it doesn't, then go back to to the grind and, <laughs> and you know, go get back to the studio again, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I wanted to ask you, actually, since like yeah. we were talking about uh, the mental health and like going through dark chapters like of your life, like, yeah, how how did you like handle like these chapters? Do you put like your your energy into making music or... Were you like adjusting your health in different ways? Like, uh, how did question. you do it? I, I would say uh, it was all about uh, the entourage, my friends. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, when you're something that's very difficult, that but sounds easy to do, it's uh, letting go and letting your friend help you when you feel uh, when you feel bad or when you have dark moments. Mm -hmm. I think uh, open up myself more to my friends. Um, allowed me to to reach a new level in terms of understanding my own mental stability balance you know so um, I mean you know just calling your friends like um, telling them bro I don't know if you're busy but bro I'd like to talk to you and uh, you'd be surprised how many of your friends they're just waiting for that call you know I think sometimes we, we take friendship for granted because we only use it for fun Yeah. For enjoying a party or for uh, or for sharing uh, like good news or, uh, or for talking about other people in their bags, you know, like all kinds of stuff. <laughs> But sometimes friendship is uh, you have to remember that the main the main the main goal of having friends is to leverage them when you can't handle your own self, you know, on like by like lon lonely, you know, by yourself. So um, I think, uh, I, I mean, I never had like big, big uh, down moments. I think I'm, I've, I've always been a very happy person. But I know whenever I was a bit like, uh, you know, like down, you don't feel like you had a good day or mm -hmm. it's been a week and you're like you're down, you don't have much going on. Uh, I know in those times I always had my friends to, You know, to, to give me a tap in the back and say, bro, like you're young, you're healthy, uh, bro, you have uh, you have your legs, you have your arms, uh, and man, you you can do whatever you want, bro. Just uh, put your mind to it and put an effort. And uh, you know, like at at this point, it's it becomes, it it brings back the competition that we all have in us. Like at some point, we want to prove people we're not like. Uh, We're not like a low life or we're not like someone that's not going to do anything with their life. We can achieve some, some things. And then you're going to show those friends, bro, like uh, to thank you for what, for, for what you did for me. I'm going to make sure you get, uh, you get like a payback for that. Yeah. Um, and when I tell you that, I think that let's say by people like uh, our common friend, Christian Sawan. Bro, Chris uh, is, the, is the guy who brought me to the studio the first time, bro. Shout out Chris, uh, man. He's yeah, a real one Chris. for real. Yeah, it's a real one. Time pays, bro. Uh, this guy, bro, I showed him my a demo. I think I showed him, I think in June or May of 2019, a demo of a song that I wrote back in March. And bro, the guy was just like, bro, you have to go to the studio. Let me hook you up. And uh, bro, he literally like took me. Um, he brought me to a studio. Uh, we had a session. He wanted to pay for the whole session. I was like, bro, like, don't you? You, you did too much already. <laughs> so, so, like, you see, that's. Uh, I think the first thing is uh, is friendship, and even the, the scientists. Like, sometimes I read articles, and the things that always comes back is that the more social interactions you have, the the better you are, like, in your in your brain, mentally. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you know, man, talking to people is uh, is good, bro. Talking, sharing with your friends, discovering, trying new things—it's the best thing to do to feel better, man. Yeah, man, you got a really mm. good point too. And your friends also they give you a different perspective of some things, exactly. right? Yeah. Like, there's one thing that's really important in life where, like, you kind of have to like listen to others, but. Sometimes opinions, they're just here for a good feedback. If you want to limit yourself, 
from who like what kind of feedback you get but it's exactly. also important to have like a very like different perspective or someone that tells you like yo this is trash and then you're like hold on but why is this trash or like mm -hmm. hold on why is this how you're not feeling it right yeah exactly Good to have like that feedback sometimes yeah. there's people around you will be real and they'll give you like some real feedback that you could use to like improve oh, yeah. it True. better yeah and obviously some people who are like listening to us right now they might they might be realizing that shit i don't have the, that kind of friends but mm -hmm. again it's it's uh, it's never too late to make sure you you make sort of a you arrange like your your friendships and you work on the, your relationships to make sure you're surrounded by this huge. only this kind of people you're talking like people that would bring this new perspective and like help you to move forward you know Mm -hmm. it's, uh, some people do it at 15 years old, very young. Other people do it at 25. Others that do it at yeah. 40. It's never too late, bro. Never too late. Indeed. At some point, you're going to have to do it because uh, the moment you feel like uh, a big, big down moment, um, bro, if you don't have the, the surroundings, it's going to be very tough. Mm -hmm. very, very tough. Mm. Yeah, you need that quality relationship. Um, it's funny because mm. I was talking to uh, my other friend the other day and he said mm. that one of the biggest measures for like happiness or like quality of life is how your relationships pretty much. So like True. the quality relationship with like your family, your friends, like everyone mm. around you. Like that's huge, man. Like Yeah, it's huge. It's and, it's, and, it's people, it's, and it's underrated because nowadays people... Uh, and honestly, I'm I'm not a fan of it, and I I really despise it. The fact that more and more people are more talking about do, just working on their own self, like being self-made, mm -hmm. making making this work on their own self. But sometimes you have to work on your environment too, like the first because because uh, you can do whatever, like you can do some yoga, you can leave your job you can you know you can change your whole life you can move to another city but bro if you don't have like some people around you to help you're not gonna make it and nobody ever did it so it's not true there's no self-made ish people around there's everybody had an opportunity or uh, or or got help from the perspective of someone else to to move forward so we have to be honest and we have to tell people um Listen, you have to change things, but uh, I'm here to help you. Or you can have people to help you do it too. You don't have to do it yourself. You don't have to to cut uh, like connection from the outside world to do it. It's yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And honestly, I was victim of that too, man. Like mm -hmm. I was like, yo, I'm gonna do it like all my own, like all the mixing, mm -hmm. all the mastering, especially mm -hmm. during quarantine. I was like wait, maybe I could just do it without, like, others. But then after a week or two, I was like, that. I was like, nah, nah, man. I got to just, like, brown it up my network, keep talking, and, like, try new ideas, like, true new content, like, especially this. Like, mm. I always wanted to, um, you know, have a podcast or, like, have something where I can discuss about that, about music and stuff like that. So Yeah, no, it's it, a great idea, bro. It's a great project, and... uh uh, I hope you're gonna have some lot of success with it because it's a it's a good format. It's nice to talk to you too, and uh, yeah, man. and hopefully, Same. and ho and hopefully, like like me too. I'm learning from this discussion, and that's the goal of a podcast, I think, for both sides to mm -hmm. learn from the other. And uh, we need it. We need it for sure. For sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. At the at the end of this podcast, I'll, um, on YouTube, I'll put um, the link down below for load. Uh, for the media, Thanks, for everything, and I'll I'll, sh I'll show him also his like new projects, and yeah, thanks, yeah so you can get him in touch with him, man. Yeah, so like I said, I have a song coming in uh, in June, so in three weeks from now. Uh, I don't know when the podcast is gonna be out, but it's June June tenth, June twelfth, around that uh, this week. Mm -hmm. This week. Um, what else? So uh, I have songs coming in SoundCloud. Um, obviously, I have a bunch of singles out uh, Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, you can find, uh, yeah, you can find me also on YouTube. Um, so yeah, guys, um, enjoy and, uh, let me know. Don't feel, don't feel shy to come to me, uh, give me critics or, um, props. I mean, I take everything guys. So 
Yeah, yeah, man. Like, let's support a let's support a local town, man. The people sure, are man. great too, man. For sure. for sure, man. Thank you so much for coming through, bro. I yeah, really I appreciate, appreciate it, your time, man. Thank, th thanks for inviting me, bro. And yeah, we'll talk soon, man. We'll okay. I'll keep you in touch. Take care. Bro. All right. Take it easy, my man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in for the first podcast of TDH Media. Again, I'm your host, Tamina. I'm going to link down below all the social media for myself, Lot, all his upcoming projects, and also all the things related to the channel. Please, if you really gave, brought some really good values from this podcast, please give us some like, a subscribe. We would love and really appreciate if you give us that feedback and also let us know how we can improve. Uh, we want to provide quality content. We want to provide value in all platforms. And uh, yeah, man, I'm excited for the new podcast. So Lode, again, was from Montreal. I knew him since uh, high school, actually. And he's doing mainly French music. And, but he's definitely an artist that you want to check, even if you don't understand the language. Because as you know, Music is not only about words, but it's about the melody, the feel, the vibe, and everything. So, all right, man, this is it. Stamina is out. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy. Stay beautiful. Si je peux réussir ma vie à, à récolter sans être fucking stressé Si je peux travailler dans un domaine que j'y suis passionné Si je peux avoir une femme qui s'accroche et se tient à mes côtés Si je peux avoir du monde qui veut s'entraider et progresser Yeah, c'est comme ça qu'on va changer Bon fini la morale, yeah. c'est temps d'en profiter Montréal, on célèbre mon arrivée Une nouvelle année, plus le temps de chiller Je me sens pas mal posé tant qu'elle m'est entreposé Sans moi un bon rosé Yeah.